What's up, positive bitches? How are we doing today? If you're hearing this episode, you are meant to be here, so keep listening. On that Bitches Positive podcast, sometimes we will laugh, other times, baby girl, we're gonna cry. But we will always walk away feeling our most empowered, positive bitch self. That is babe in true connection with herself. On this podcast, we unbecome who we are not so we can fully step into exactly who we came here to be. Today, we are talking about who we know them, we do not always love them, men. Yep, all the mistakes I've made while dating in my 26 years of living on this planet. We are going to be diving into my very own tale of boys and men and CC. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I intend that you can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to waste your own time. Success leaves clues and so do some failures. So I'm going to impart everything I've learned, the mistakes I've made with you essentially exposing myself on the internet, Mm -hmm. Uh -uh, chef's kiss, so that you can run where I have walked, okay? Before we get into it, a couple of announcements. If you're not yet following me on Instagram at Vibin with CC, follow me there for daily tips and tricks on how to activate your divine feminine energy, magnetize your energy, not get mad but get everything you want. Of course, if you're going through a breakup, join the 21 Day Breakup Globe Challenge. If you want to learn how to put yourself on the pedestal, oh, we have a course for that too, The Pedestal Path. I have workbooks on the divine feminine energy on calling your power back. This is your life. You are an active participant. Take back your power by taking action in accordance to what it is you wish to see in your reality. And of course, of course, of course, I am a certified life and energy coach. If you are looking for one-on-one guidance, you can DM me on Instagram and I can tell you more about my packages there. I have everything from divine feminine activation and healing to self-concept tune up to attachment system healing and everything you can think of in between. If you're ready to take your power back and reclaim your reality, understand the energetic roots that are keeping you stuck, then baby girl, it's time to book that session. You have power. Let's use it. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So we are going to go through a couple of different specimens that I have (laughs) dated in the past and we're going to learn from my own very mistakes. The first case study we will be diving into is specimen six foot four. This is because he was a Polish six foot four Viking. Let's dive into it, shall we? Okay, so I was out at a bar and I was dancing and out of nowhere, this six foot four man just starts dancing with me. I was so confused. How do you not see a huge man come up to you? I don't know either, but somehow he just appeared and I was like, whoa, okay, this is fine. I guess I can just do this, sure. Then we started talking and he was like, let me get you a drink. So we go to get a drink. He immediately starts basically trauma dumping on me, how if it wasn't for his family, he would essentially unalive himself. First red flag. I am hearing this man immediately, this grown man, he's an adult, immediately start telling me very, very dark emotions that he feels about himself. I don't even know his name. By the way, I called him the wrong name for three weeks didn't know anyway so I don't know your name he starts telling me all these deep dark things and I thought oh this is someone I can fix you are not a rehabilitation center for other humans you are not their fixer you are a human being focused on yourself the real red flag here was that he was leading with his divine wounded feminine when you meet a masculine energy and they immediately start talking about their emotions he said he was gonna unalive himself if it wasn't for his family this was his wounded feminine if you think about basic animalistic tendencies what do peacocks do in order to attract a female mate they show their feathers all of their iridescent tail feathers and they strut back and forth shaking their 
feathers to produce this rattling sound and it makes a loud call out to all the females. When a man wants to court you, he's not going to lead with his wounded feminine emotions. He's going to lead with his masculine strengths. And that was something I didn't know at this time. A lot of men who lead with their wounded feminine, it's sort of a subconscious manipulative tactic of, oh, I'm going to lead with my feminine. I'm going to tell them all these things so they feel close. So that way they feel like, oh, he's so open with me. He's so vulnerable. I'm going to let him into my heart and let him into my life and my body. Absolutely not. You need to be on the lookout for men who lead with their wounded feminine energy. Because they're trying to make it seem like they're so vulnerable and they're so open. But this is not a man who wants to court you. He wants to take you to bed. And there's a difference. Okay? When a man wants to actually establish a relationship with you, he's not going to lead with his weakness. That makes no sense. He is going to lead with his strength. So if a man is immediately upon meeting him talking about all of his wounded emotions, he's leading with his wounded feminine. He wants to take you to bed, not down the aisle. When they are trying (laughs) to manipulate us with their emotions, whether it's subconscious or not, it doesn't matter. This is not someone we want to pursue. It's not someone we need to fix. Get out of your own damn head. You are not a fixer. You're a human being. The second red flag is that he never asked me out on a date. He asked me to Netflix and chill. He said, come over. We can have some wine. Thank God I happened to be busy that I couldn't go over because I would have said yes. But there was no progression of connection. Another red flag. He told me upon meeting he was never going to call me. Hmm. I know myself. Okay. Not only did I used to have a high codependency and anxious attachment. I also as a woman, need to hear your voice. I need to talk to you to feel connected to you or else I literally forget you exist and you pop out of my reality I I don't even know anymore. I knew that him just texting me every now and again, by the way, he barely ever texted me, I knew he wasn't going to be enough for me and I let it go anyway because simply I felt a little bit lonely. So I said, oh, whatever, this is better than nothing. No, no. Wrong. When you drop your standards, you allow in people who are only going to take away from your life. Remember the Harvard principle. Have high standards and a low acceptance rate for the BS you accept into your life. Every time he didn't call me every day that went by, when he would text me a low vibrational conversation, it was like little pieces of me were just breaking away, breaking away because I knew what I needed and I wasn't speaking up for what I needed. I let it go. I tried to convince myself that this was going to be enough. Stop convincing yourself that people who give you the bare minimum are enough for you. They're not. They're not enough for you. That's okay. That's okay. I remember one time he not even texted me. He DM'd me. He had my number, but he chose to DM me on Instagram. Okay. Uh, He DM'd me on Instagram a picture of a sandwich. And he said, does this look good to you? It looked disgusting. Of course, I was like, yes, King. Ugh. Ugh. My mistake number two was I was doing the job of a girlfriend without being paid with the title of a girlfriend. I wasn't in love with this dude, but I liked him. I was giving him more effort. I was letting go of my boundaries. I was letting go of my standards. I was meeting him where he wanted to meet. I was going where he wanted to go. I was too available. I gave too much of my energy, too much of my body, too much of my time. And the thing that really gets me going, and I've told this before, but I even helped him clean his apartment. Yep, I took out his trash. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. The kicker for me 
the cherry on top of the cake, if you will, was there was a book next to his bed that literally, I cannot remember the title because God doesn't even want me to know it. That was literally about disproving the existence of God. And then I said, I got to get the hell out of here. Got to get out of here. This man was everything I didn't want, yet I kept allowing him into my life. And what we allow into our life, we amplify. This was a jump scare for me. My mistake number one was not realizing the red flags, was not realizing that he was leading with his wounded divine feminine. He wasn't making the plans. He wasn't giving effort. I was mistake number two, doing the job of a girlfriend without getting paid with the title. And that brings me to mistake number three, which is intimacy. Being intimate with someone who I knew couldn't give me what I needed. Energy transference. When you are, whether you like it or not, this is not a conversation for you to try to disprove. It's true. I don't care if you don't believe it. This is true. It's like gravity. It applies whether you believe it or not. Energy transference is always going to happen when you're intimate with another person. What does this mean? Some of your energy goes on to them and some of their energy goes on to you. It's like putting both of your energies into a blender and then drinking that smoothie. Okay. It's like gluing two pieces of paper together and then trying to rip them apart. It gets messy. When I was intimate with this person, some of his negative energy got onto me and then I started having negative thoughts about myself. I started thinking low about myself. Of course I did that because his thoughts about me were low. He was disrespecting me. He just thought, oh, this is some girl who cares. And I started taking on his low vibrational entities, his low vibrational thoughts. When you go out and you just meet a random person, you don't know their demons, okay? You don't know their traumas. You don't know all their low vibrational things. I had a God wink because this man literally told me to my face, I would unalive myself if it wasn't for my family. He literally told me to my face how low in vibration he was. But I was like, oh, it's fine. (laughs) No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. These are the things we need to stop doing to ourselves. And of course, mistake number four was that even as the relationship continued, if we can even call it a relationship, it was really a situationship. Even as it continued, I still never spoke up. Instead of me speaking up for my own needs, as it got more serious, even after we were intimate, what did I do? I ghosted myself and said, oh, Jump scare once again. I ghosted myself instead. Our relationship to ourself will be mirrored back to us in our external reality. Baby girl, if you don't want to be ghosted anymore, stop ghosting yourself. I ghosted my wants, my desires, my values, my boundaries, and my standards. And guess what he did to me? He ghosted me Two, because how I treat myself is the biggest teacher for how others are going to treat me too. It's the biggest indicator of how other people are going to treat me too. I showed him how to treat me because I let go of my boundaries, let go of my values. I let go of my center. So of course he's not going to respect it either. If I can ghost myself, why wouldn't he be able to ghost me Two, we're so afraid as women, I believe, to speak up for our needs because we're afraid to be perceived as needy. But guess what? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. When you're courageous enough to place yourself on your pedestal and speak up for your needs, your needs will be met from the universe and from your partners. When you place yourself on the pedestal, other people will look up at you and give you what it is you desire. But when you place them on a pedestal and ghost yourself, they're going to look down at you. They're going to disrespect you too because you are disrespecting yourself. No one can displace you. You can only displace yourself and then others will treat you accordingly to your own treatment. You have the power to change your life. And it begins by you shifting how you're treating yourself. If you don't like how they're treating you, stop allowing it. If you don't like that they don't respect you, cut them out of your life until they can do better. It's up to you. The power has quite literally always been in your hands. If you don't want their low vibrational energy, stop being intimate with them. If you want to be given the title of a girlfriend, stop allowing them to be in your life without giving you the title of a girlfriend. Stop ignoring the red flags. Put it to rest. The moral of this 
tale of boys and men from specimen six foot four is this. I was in a low vibration during this time. I was going out every single weekend. I was drinking away my thoughts and my emotions because I didn't even want to look at them. And because I was in a low vibrational place disrespecting myself, I attracted someone who was also in a low vibration place who was also going to disrespect me and who was also not going to see me as the prize that I truly am. Another moral of the tale of boys and men is I gave too much of myself away too soon and in general. The other part of this is I ghosted myself and so he ghosted me too. Hear me when I say giving more of what already isn't appreciated won't get them to commit to you. You committing to yourself and saying, I'm not going to allow this, that will shift them. That will shift you. That will shift your reality. What happens when you keep giving, 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 even though you're never receiving, is they'll just continuously take advantage of you. No. We're no longer living in a world where we're not putting ourselves on our own pedestal. We're no longer receiving treatment where we feel like we're getting disrespected left and right. You have to understand that you truly have the power to stop allowing this behavior, to stop allowing these people into your life. Another moral of this tale of boys and men is that I had the power all along and I didn't use it. I didn't assert myself. I didn't put myself on the pedestal and now I know better. Okay, next specimen, next case study, specimen C2. And that stands for C squared. It stands for course correction. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of us do is we'll be in a relationship and maybe we're in a relationship with someone who's also in their feminine or more passive. So then our in our next relationship, we try to course correct and we go so far to the opposite pole that we overdo it. Okay, hello. Yes, that's what I did. I was in a relationship that I felt like I was in a lot of my masculine energy most of the time. And when that relationship ended, I said to myself, I want a relationship in which my partner is super masculine. So that is what I'm going to get. And here's mistake number five, okay? I have been working with a shaman recently. I've always, I've been working with her for years. But something that we've really recently been talking about is I have to watch that when there's other people in my vicinity or when I was in relationships in my past, I would shift either in my masculine or my feminine solely based on what that person was leading with. So if my partner was leading with their masculine, I would go into my feminine. If they were leading with their feminine, I would go into my masculine. And what this shaman has been working with me to do is understanding that my feminine energy is my responsibility. Disclaimer, there will be partners who make you feel unsafe so you do go into your masculine energy. But what she is imparting on me, which I will impart on you, is that your feminine energy is your responsibility. And you want to be in your divine feminine energy regardless of what energies people are in around you. So yes, people can affect what energy you step up into in their presence, but you really want to try to say, regardless if you're going to step into your masculine or or your feminine, I'm going to be in my feminine. I always think if someone's in a lower vibration, you're not going to bring me down just because you're in a lower vibration. Maybe I'll raise you up or I'm just going to leave. It's kind of that same essence of regardless of what people are doing around you you can decide to show up in your feminine energy anyway and the people who are also in their feminine energy the partners who are in their feminine energy you don't have to worry about them they'll naturally fall out of your life but you don't have to be in your masculine you don't have to say well they're in their feminine so I have to be my masculine you can step up in your feminine energy anyway and let them fall out and that's a lesson for me to learn it's a lesson for all of us to learn And I think it's really interesting because I always think that way if someone's in a lower vibration, but I didn't think that way when it came to divine feminine energy. So my mistake number five was thinking that I had to be in my masculine if my partner was in their feminine. No, I can still show up in my feminine. And if they can't polarize into their masculine, then they'll just fall out of your life. 
So what happened was, I didn't know that at that time. So that was mistake number five. I did the Abraham Hicks technique, wouldn't it be nice? And this is a manifesting technique. This is a side note. So if you want to manifest someone, listen up. This technique goes, all you do is say, wouldn't it be nice if I met a partner, and this was what I wanted, who was over six foot, I said one physical thing, get over it, over six foot, who likes to read books, who had a relationship with God, who was into working out too. And that was basically it, I think. And so I ma- I manifested, oh, how could I forget? The most important thing was that he was very much in his masculine energy. That was like the first thing that I said. I manifested exactly that within like a week, a week, okay? Now, my mistake, <laughs> I was not specific enough and that came to bite me in the butt a little bit later. So yeah, he was definitely in his masculine, uh, kind of his wounded masculine though. He was somewhat controlling like every time we would take a walk he would never let me walk in front of him first of all you should want me to walk in front of you so you can make sure that I'm safe duh but he would always like push me behind him or like next to him and I found this so irritating my spirit would turn into a little flame every time and I was like oh god this is so annoying I found that very controlling and annoying don't like I can't help if I walk a little faster like walk faster anyway He also was a different religion and to me I didn't care because my parents are two different religions and it's not been a problem for them but I knew it was going to be a problem for him so I was like I got to cut my loss here and get out of this. He also had very constricted views on women and I was like bro like I am I'm like pretty traditional in my thoughts about women and men but you are like on some other level that I, I can't even like beyond okay beyond. So yes, I manifested someone who liked to work out. He was like an MMA person, mixed martial arts. He literally said, let's start our own book club. He had a relationship with God, but different religion. So be specific. But also I said masculine. I didn't say a healed masculine. Should have said that. But the biggest mistake that I made here is I thought, the masculine was so about the 3D. And I thought it was about like this more so dominant, kind, not controlling, but like dominant, a little bit controlling maybe. But that's not what the divine masculine is. The divine masculine is so much more about a person who can be present with you, who can be grounded when you feel ungrounded who can withstand your emotional storms, who can be there when you're having heartache and can hear you when you're having pain. I now realize a masculine energy isn't about, you know, who's the most masculine when they walk in and have this, you know, stance and the job and the blah, blah, blah. It's more so about who actually has that quiet confidence who can be there with me when I really need them. Because that's what masculine energy is. It's presence. It's being able to provide safety and security. That dominant energy he brought didn't feel safe and secure. It felt really constrictive. And that was my mistake number six. I didn't understand. Number five was I didn't understand that I can be in my divine feminine energy regardless of what other people are doing. And number six was I thought the divine masculine was this 3D image of this dominant man but really it's about someone who can be present with you so the moral of this tale of boys and men is I had the wrong idea about masculine energy and I had the wrong idea about feminine energy I also think I learned that the grass is greener where you water it I was thinking oh this person's so passive and I was Uh, labeling so many negative meanings about that prior relationship and I thought the grass was going to be greener with this more masculine man but every single partner is going to have different problems and you have to decide what set of problems can you live with who's going to annoy you the least as a Capricorn that is something I know very well the grass is simply greener wherever you water it I also realized that even though specimen c squared wasn't my husband I realized that he was a better vibrational match and closer to what my husband's going to be than specimen six foot four while you're dating 
it's okay that you don't find your husband in one second. It's okay if you date around, whatever. Realize that while you're dating, though, contrast leads to clarification. And see how each of your matches is getting better and better and better and better. Specimen C squared was a lot closer and felt a lot better than specimen six foot four he wasn't it but he was closer and you have to celebrate your little and big wins when you can to just not get burnt out from dating next case study specimen x ex like my ex-partner okay i wanted a break from specimen x so badly but i could not get myself to actually break up with him I knew I needed space I knew I needed time to focus on me but it was so difficult for me to to just end it mistake number seven was me thinking that this was about him when really it was about me our relationships as I said before are our biggest mirrors for our own wounds and our own feelings and our own inner world I was thinking well, maybe I'm meant to stay with this person right now. Maybe I should keep them in my life. Maybe they're just the one. No, CC, it's just your anxious attachment. That's it. Girl, you just have some wounds. Understand that your partners are not going to be all love and light and rainbows and daisies. They are going to trigger you. They are going to be a mirror to your own wounds. And when you feel like I'm obsessed with this person or I can't break away from this person, understand it's not about the dude. It's about the dynamic that the dude is supplying to you. And therefore, it's more about you and how they're fitting into a story you've been telling yourself than it's actually about them being the one. I had to take a step back and say, I need some healing. I need to focus on me because this relationship is showing me that there's something within me that needs love, that needs connection, that needs healing. Not that this person is just the one. Mistake number eight was, I knew my intuition was telling me for a very long time, you need space, you need space, you need space. But I wasn't listening to it. And I kept trying to push it down, push it down, push it down, push it down. And eventually me and Specimen X got so toxic for one another that this brings me to mistake number nine. I drove them to a point that they're like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And they ended up just ending it with me. I could have, if I had the strength, ended it with them. But I had anxious attachment. Ha ha. And so I couldn't <laughs> at that time. And the mistake number nine is I I begged them to stay with me. I begged them for love. Baby girl. Begging someone to love you is your own red flag. Your soulmate is not going to be someone you have to beg to love you you begging someone to love you is pointing towards something much deeper maybe it's anxious attachment maybe it's a wound that you've never felt good enough but either way it has nothing to do with them and it has a whole lot to do with you you want to fill that hole you're feeling within you Oh, okay, get a life coach, go to therapy, start praying to God. That person can never fill that hole because they are not the ones who created it. This hole has been within you for a very, very long time. They might be the band-aid on the bullet wound, but they can never fill it up like you can. This hole requires you to focus here. This hole requires you to water it, you to look at it, you to nurture it, not them. They might be touching your wounds and you feel it ow they might be triggering it but it's been within you for a long time stop looking at the dude because it's not about them it's about you and when you take responsibility for your own healing your life will change that's it and I didn't realize I thought if I keep begging if I keep begging he'll love me no because giving more of what you're already giving and it's not being appreciated will not get them to appreciate it later not everyone can see value when there is value nope 
That's why some people can understand, oh, this is going to be a good company. Let me invest in this. I see value. And then they end up becoming multimillionaires. Not everyone can see value. Do you know how many people have been denied, denied, denied because someone else didn't see their value and they end up becoming multimillionaires? I know we're talking about love, but you have to understand not everyone can understand value even when it's there. If they can't understand your value, let them go find less somewhere else. Mistake number 10. Because I didn't leave when God removed this person from my life, it hurt more. I could have had a smoother exit, but I didn't listen to my intuition. I listened to my fear. And that always makes things worse. I don't regret it. It hurt like hell. I don't regret it because it led me to where I am now. But please, when you know God's trying to remove someone from your life, let them. Because the more you try to get them to stay, the more you beg them, it doesn't get them to stay. It just makes their exit harder on you. We have to start easing into our cycles of life instead of trying to fight against them. If God is trying to remove someone from your life, let God do the damn thing. Because the more you fight it, the more frustrated you're going to get and they're still going to leave. The more tired you're going to get and they're still going to leave. You begging someone to love you doesn't mean that they're going to have a switch that turns on in their head and they now love you, it means that you're going to feel like you have depleted yourself. If someone's trying to leave your life, let them. Make room for the right person to come in. Make room for yourself to focus on you. God knows better. Our ceiling is God's floor. We don't always know what's best for us. And I have spent so much time trying to hold on to things, so much time trying to really get my claws into someone or something to make it stay. But when God wants something removed from your life, it's leaving whether you like it or not. And you can try to fight that transition, but you're just going to cause more frustration for yourself. The Buddha actually never said that attachment is the root of all misery. What the Buddha said was that wishing things were different than they are, that is the root of all misery. Stop wishing, stop trying, stop trying to control everything and let things be. Allow cycles to unfold for you. You're not alone. You are a co-creator of your life. So co-create, don't try to control everything. Moral of this tale of boys and men, baby girl, heal. Look at yourself. They're a mirror of you. Look at yourself. Get the life coach. Do the energy healing. Work on yourself. If they're meant to be yours, they will come back around new and improved. This specimen of the ex is my now current partner. Yep. We broke up for about a year. We didn't speak. And then we both came back new and improved. Yep, I didn't want to tell you that till the end. (laughs) Hee hee, surprise ending. But we have to surrender. I had to surrender. By the way, I did not try to manifest my ex back into my life. No. And that's exactly why he came back into my life. Because I refocused on me. I said, what do I need to heal within myself? What What do I need to focus on? What do I want to do with my career, my hobbies, my friends? And because I took back my focus, I took back my power. And he felt this shift. And when we realigned, we were both better versions of ourselves. And we've been able to come back together in divine union. But that could never have happened if I was stalking him, begging for him to come back and wasting all my energy on him they always come back when you come back to yourself first it's energetic law so do what you need to do to become the best version of you and that ex will either come back a better improved version or you'll get someone better either way when you focus on you you always win in the end Next case study is Specimen F. The reason why he's called Specimen F is because he ghosted me after he met my family. (laughs) Ha ha. Once again, joke on me. Anyway, when he ghosted me, I made a ton of negative meanings about myself. And this is mistake number 11. I was making it personal about me and I didn't realize it was just vibrational. When he ghosted me, I said, oh, it's because I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not blah, 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 blah. No. 
a lot of time we look at a 3D circumstance and then we convince ourselves that somehow this happened because we're not good enough. That was a lie I was telling myself. So what do I want you to do? Flip the script. Become the subject of your own sentence once again. I realized, wait a second, it's not that I'm not good enough for this man. He is not good enough for me. He can't give me what I want. He can't give me what I need. He ghosted me. If he can't even communicate and he ghosted me with his words, God knows what he would ghost me with in his future. This is it personal this is vibrational of course he ended up coming back around because they always do when we come back to ourselves first and I said you know what I can be your friend but that's all I can offer because I realized this was God showing me that I first of all had to stop ghosting myself which I didn't ghost myself when he came back around because I said no 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 no. I'm not going to ghost myself I'm standing up for myself this is not going to happen but also When something happens in my reality, it's not about me not being good enough. This was a lesson in my worthiness, in my self-esteem, me recognizing my own strength. No more thinking that you're not good enough and start realizing that the things that are not good enough for you have to fall out of your life. No more thinking you're not good enough and start realizing that things that are not in vibrational alignment with you, they have to fall out of your life so that a higher vibrational match, opportunity, place, person, whatever it is, can come in to your reality. Moral of this tale of boys and men is that people are going to put us down. So please, for the love of God, don't put yourself down. You don't need to create negative meaning around the circumstances that happen in your life because magnetic women see circumstances for what they are and they create positive meaning around it anyway to push themselves forward. This wasn't personal. This was vibrational. This wasn't because I wasn't good enough. It was because he wasn't good enough for me. Positive bitches, I hope these case studies will help you understand some lessons about dating that you can take into your own life. There were 11 mistakes that I've made throughout these tales of boys and men and I hope they can help you understand your own internal world so you can have better results in dating and better results in your love life and also better results in your connection with yourself. As always, the sparkle in me honors the sparkle in you. If you're watching this on YouTube, please put a comment below, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and it would mean the world to me if you could leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It really helps the podcast grow. I have a lot of new intentions for this podcast this year. I really want us to grow, and I'm going to put that out there now because we're ready, positive bitches. Let's empower one another to take our power back so we can simply get what it is we want and so deserve I love you I love you I love you if you have suggestions for what you want to see on this podcast you can comment directly below on YouTube what you want to hear or DM me on at that bitches positive on YouTube I'll see you in the next one